Many important historical figures have met endings that are shrouded in mystery or died with the knowledge that the world would like to know. Here are two intriguing stories about secrets to the grave, which posed more questions than they answered and play out more like a political thriller rather than real life. Number two, Boris Berezovsky. Boris Berezovsky was one of the fabled Russian oligarchs who became enormously wealthy with the privatization of undervalued national assets in the 1990s and at its zenith wielded great political power in the shaping of government. Berezovsky founded and reorganized companies such as Aeroflot and in 1994 gained control of ORT Television or Channel One. He was also a government official and at one stage a member of Russia's Security Council. He became an ally of Putin and oversaw his rapid rise to power in 1999, creating Putin's unity party and himself gaining a seat in the Duma. Corruption seemed an accepted state of play, with Aeroflot funding Putin's campaign and ORT TV using aggressive media tactics to discredit Putin's rivals and disseminate his propaganda. But the falling out between Putin and Berezovsky was equally swift. Berezovsky resigning his Duma seat within three weeks of Putin's ascendancy because of his autocratic ideology and anti-democratic measures. When Putin attempted to confiscate Berezovsky's OIT shares and reopen the Aeroflot fraud investigation, Berezovsky did not hesitate in speaking out against him. Putin replied publicly that he had a cudgel for Berezovsky, which he would use when needed. By 2006, Berezovsky had fled Russia and been divested of most of his assets, his media empire and other alternative journalism outlets, decimated by government seizures. Now living in exile in Britain, Berezovsky continued to publicly criticise Putin and claim that Scotland Yard had warned him that his life was at risk. He established the Anti-Putin International Foundation for Civil Liberties and met with other Russian dissidents, including Alexander Litvinenko, and was later mysteriously poisoned. Now granted a refugee status and political asylum by the British, he was again warned by British Foreign Minister Jack Straw not to speak out or plot against Putin. There were two alleged attempts by Russian hitmen to assassinate Berezovsky in 2003 and 2007, and the disturbingly unexpected deaths of two friends, Litvinenko in 2006 and Badre Patakatsishvili in 2008. Both deaths were deemed suspicious by authorities, which would have unnerved Berezovsky. These events and a failed lawsuit, which had forced him to sell off his possessions to cover costs, may have led to his downward spiral into depression and self-imposed isolation from his friends. In 2013, his body was found in his ex-wife's bathroom, surrounded by objects of self-harm, which included two scarves as well as other contradictory forensic evidence, leading to the coroner declaring an open verdict. In a final twist, his girlfriend Katerina Sabarova claimed that Berezovsky had written a letter to Putin asking for forgiveness and permission to return to Russia. However, she rejected the possibility of Berezovsky suiciding, saying that he'd been sounding happier than usual and was about to meet her in Israel for a holiday. So no one but Berezovsky knew the truth of his final moments. Number one, Richard A. Moore. Why was the address and identity of George H. W. Bush's friend, lawyer and government advisor Richard A. Moore suppressed for 30 years in Secret Service records after a seemingly innocuous neighbourly visit? Moore was the sole alibi witness in the so-called October Surprise Conspiracy, a plot attributed to Ronald Reagan's presidential campaign to sabotage the popularity of the incumbent President Jimmy Carter. Carter's October surprise was a plan for the release of 52 American hostages who had been held captive in Iran for over a year, boosting his popularity 
prior to the election. The conspiracy theory that emerged alleged that Bush, the then vice presidential candidate, made a secret visit to Paris to negotiate with the Iranian government to delay the hostage release. This would portray Carter as weak and ineffectual on the world stage, massively losing him votes and setting the stage for Reagan's landslide 1981 victory. The hostages were released just minutes after Reagan's inauguration, enhancing his image as a strong statesman. Evidently, Iran was rewarded for their collusion by the unfreezing of their government funds in US banks and the provision of weapons which were delivered via Israel. Revelations about the clandestine Iran-Contra arms shipments to Iran in 1985 reignited suspicions about secret deals and Bush's alleged attendance at a secret meeting in Paris on Sunday, October the 19th, 1980. These suspicions were confirmed from both within the US government and by other meeting attendees, which included French, Russian and Israeli intelligence, and even Iran's former president, Bani Sadra. The witnesses said they observed Bush at the meeting in Paris on the same October Sunday in 1980 that he claimed to have visited a family friend in Washington. His wife, Barbara Bush, is also listed in the Secret Service detail and may have made the visit as a decoy to cover her husband's movements. Investigative journalist Robert Perry fought for 30 years to have the identity of the alibi witness revealed in order that he answer questions about that day. Perry had long identified Moore as the family friend from a simple real estate search and was aware that he may have owed Bush for securing his exoneration during the Watergate scandal. Although during a congressional investigation, Bush had agreed to reveal the alibi witness's identity to the task force, the crucial witness was never called in for questioning. And when redacted Secret Service records were released, Moore's address was wiped out and notes missing for that date. The allegations and smears from the October surprise conspiracy lasted for years, while a simple testimony from Moore that Bush had visited him that day would have cleared Bush conclusively. In 2011, Perry finally reported that he had received sufficient information from the government to publicly identify Moore. However, the information came 16 years too late. Moore had taken his crucial evidence to his deathbed at aged 81 in 1995.